So DreamHack is coming to Anaheim in, well, a couple weeks. And one of the cool things about DreamHack is you got a lot of custom computers and stuff people bring. And it's the first time that I'm aware of that they've come to the West Coast in a long time, if not ever. I don't remember if DreamHack was a part of that whole NVIDIA Mod 24 thing. But regardless, I'm going because I can't have a LAN party so close to my backyard and not go. But I also can't go with a stock looking computer. So we got to fix that today. Looking for a new PC or PC hardware? Then today's sponsor, Micro Center, is guaranteed to have what you need. Micro Center's huge selection of hardware and devices, along with their industry leading prices, mean you get more for your money this holiday season. With Build Your Own, Micro Center carries the latest in PC tech from all major brands, while passionate, knowledgeable sales staff are available to assist you with your next build. Not comfortable building it yourself? Then certified in store technicians can build it for you in as little as the same day. To see all that Micro Center has to offer and to find the store closest to you, click the sponsor link in the description below. Also too, it's really, really, really windy today and our door wants to, our insulation that I taped up wants to blow off. So I've got like ladders and things all trying to hold that up from falling down and tires and shelving because I've been too lazy to actually come up with a permanent solution for that door and it's making a lot of noise. So if you hear it, I'm sorry. Also the, the heater is on because it's 48 degrees right now and in SoCal temp that might as well be Antarctica. But anyway, DreamHack is coming to SoCal and I'm not gonna miss it. And I'm also not gonna show up with a stock computer because I'm just too freaking sense and I can't do that. And I could show up with Nebula, but that's kind of a to move. So small form factor to where it's at. So that's why I figured the perfect platform to do this is our Corsair One because it's a small compact system. It's already got a 9900K in there. It's got all SSD and NVMe. It's, got, it's water cooled. It's got a 2080 Ti that's also water cooled. And I thought this would be the perfect platform to mod. So the Destiny 2 build that we did in the Node 202 for Mark, I'm gonna be using the same techniques and this will be a fairly similar type of build. In fact, I liked the way his turned out so much, I said I wanted my own. So this is gonna be my own version of sort of the same weathering techniques, the paint chipping, the undercoating, the sealing, even the damage. These are very robust panels and they're aluminum, but they're very tough. So I'm gonna be doing like a, like a blaster impact, like a laser impact on this probably. The cool thing about this is when you're weathering and distressing, there's no wrong way. And if you screw something up, it kind of only adds to the theme, I guess. But we're gonna be making this look very Star Wars inspired, if you will. But if you wanna know more about the techniques I'm doing on the painting side of things, then you're gonna to wanna to go and check out the Destiny 2 build. And I will try my best, remember to put a link in the description below. So I found my taxes. <laughs> but it's a very simple technique that works really, really well when you do it properly. I've also already disassembled this thing fully. That'd be cool if I made it so that when it turns on, it's like <laughs> and In terms of the like paints and stuff, I just use basic stuff. I love VHT. You can get it at AutoZone or anywhere auto paint is sold because it dries extremely fast. We're using the primer because I don't want any metallics. The problem is getting any sort of like a top coat, like a main, like color coat for any of these brands, they're all like metallic-y. And I don't want a metallic, I want like a flat battleship gray. So we'll be using primer for that, but we also are gonna be having undercoat because of the chipping technique. That is gonna be sort of just a silvery color. I got a little more disassembly I gotta do. So I gotta take like these chrome pieces off right here. They just screw in there. And I'll be using my art picture. Some people were really disappointed that they didn't see another iFixit ad after our last one. Like once a month, guys. Quite honestly, if you guys wanna know more about like the price of these kits and what's available, there is a link to this down in the description below. And that links directly to my Amazon affiliate. So it also does give a little kickback to the channel if you guys decide to purchase anything and it doesn't cost you any extra. So get something for your money rather than just me. I love this assembling thing because I don't label anything. I just sort of hope it all goes back together when I'm done. And then these are probably the most overbuilt panels, period. This is the base, and this is the part that the fan goes in. Listen to this. That's like satisfying, huh? Yeah. Anyway, so I want to do, like I said, like a blaster impact. The idea with the Destiny build is it got hit with that sword. That was an easy gash to make, but laser blasts are different. They're almost a perfect circle, 
and then there's kind of a, a, a smooth burning in as it goes. So this is one of those things where I kind of only got one shot at this. Um, another reason why I don't want the gash to be too big or whatever is because this particular chassis is designed to only draw air through these vents. And if I give it a big open place for it to pull air through, that's air that won't come through here. And that's how these radiators have cooling is there's no fans on the radiators because there's a single fan on the top pulling air through the chassis. So that's that convection assisted cooling. So if I make a big blaster hole that is now an efficient way for it to bring air in, that's gonna suck. Wish me luck. See, the trick is just don't think about it. But the crazy part is I'm gonna go in and now I'm gonna turn it. I need a vacuum. This is the worst vacuum I've ever owned. I need hearing protection. NASCAR pit stop. You're going down, you giggity, no racing. Whoa. <laughs> what we learned is don't try to go at an angle until the hole's in. <laughs> when, I was, when I was a kid, I used to think like, this laser is, it needs to go faster. So that's probably where I'm gonna stop on the, the damage effects because I really don't want to overdo it. And I think, you know, the painting will really sell the effect, but what do you think, Phil? I mean, once that's painted and you see the black scorching and stuff, yeah, now I have to prep for paint. We got the door open to fan, so it's noisy. Anyway, um, so this is the base coat we're going with here, which is just like a, a silver, because we were kind of looking at some pictures online and it seemed like whenever there was weathering on these ships, anything in Star Wars, it always seemed to have like a white slash really light silver undercoat, like the, whatever the metal and stuff was. We are going to be now just doing a, a coat or two of this silver, but because it's not that much different than the primer, I'm just gonna do like probably one really light coat. And then, cause it'll stick to the primer really good. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do the chipping. Like I said, we did that in Destiny 2 build, so I won't go super in depth. But I'll show you how we do the weathering effect, which is pretty cool. And then we'll do some airbrushing and stuff on there. That's my favorite part. That worked out pretty well. So that's two coats of primer, just one coat of the silver metallic. And this, uh, this is our structure. What I mean by that is this is our base coat. Um, what's going to be underneath our actual color coat. And this is what's going to kind of show through when we do the weathering. What we're going to do is we're going to take hairspray. Doesn't really matter what kind. And we are just going to sort of apply it like some of the corners, different areas. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna spray the next color, which is this darker, more of a KS2O kind of a look. And wait, wait S2O, K2, KS. K2, K2SO. K2SO, that's what I said, right? And then we will be chipping away some of this color in weathered areas to make this show, th or this show through that. The other thing you kind of need to stress, I need to stress with the hairspray, is you need to let it dry, like, fully because if it's wet and you spray over it it's just it just turns gummy and then you don't get the same effect that we're going for here so this is the top vent where the fan is and obviously i don't want to paint this to match i want this to be contrasty and like dark and phil and i were kind of talking about this he's like well it'd be neat though if you could weather that so i'm just like well you know why not do it for real because we want to make the metal underneath sort of show through but if we kind of focus on the corners, see, just kind of get it to show through like that. Okay, so the hairspray is completely dried now. There's a loud truck out there, sorry about that. So now we are gonna put on our top coat. So before I start doing anything with the hairspray, I'm just gonna start Getting our blaster marks back. Now I sprayed the blaster areas directly with the hairspray. So that's why we're getting this nice immediate like chipping peeling effect. But what's gonna really sell this, just like I did with the Destiny build, is I'm gonna be putting like black airbrushing on this to make it look scorched. And then I'm kind of lifting as I go, that way it has kind of like a taper sort of an effect to it. What you need to do the chipping, water, I use a toothbrush, I use just something pokey to get it started. We'll start with the power button here. Something like that, so that I give a place for the water to sort of start to get in there. And then, there we go. 
And like I said, I really don't want to overdo it. If this is an Imperial thing, it probably won't have the same level of weathering as like the Resistance, because Resistance had like old hand-me-down stuff and uh, it's all like band-aided together. I'm just focusing on like the corners and stuff. So we're just gonna kind of more subtly give ourselves some weathering. There's like a before and an after kind of a deal. These will be blackened, obviously. This is when the airbrush final work is done at the end. There's no right or wrong way. <laughs> okay, so what I need to do now is I need to clear coat this. Watch this. See? That's just gonna continue to do that because of all the hairspray. I barely touched it and it chipped up until I seal it. And I'm gonna seal it now with the satin clear. So we got these stickers made. So we're gonna put the Imperial logo here. We're gonna put this verbiage there. And this verbiage is gonna go like right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be transferring this on there and then we're, I'll be airbrushing and building a little booth again real quick, but airbrushing this on there and then weathering it a little bit like we did with the Warlock logo on the Destiny 2 build. So I keep telling you guys, go watch that video if you wanna know how I'm doing all this, even though I keep showing you how I'm doing it. I wonder how much paint it's gonna take off too when I uh, take the backing layer off. Oh wow, look how much paint that's taking off with it. That's okay, it's just extra weathered now. I just hope that the, the stencil square doesn't Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause see? Yeah, that totally. <laughs> That's a complete fail. Look at that. All the, all the paint stuck right there. That sucks. This is a much smoother surface. The, the No 202 was much more textury, which gave it a lot of bite. I barely touched it on there and the paint came up with it. So it's almost 1.30 in the afternoon the next day. And as you guys saw, we had a major disaster where we realized the paint was not sticking to the aluminum. And that's my fault. Couple reasons. One, I didn't prep it properly. I didn't sand it enough. When we did the Destiny 2 build, I keep referencing that because it's very similar technique, but as you can see, we are having very different results. This is anodized aluminum. This is bare metal. Even though aluminum is dyed, it's still bare metal. It's not a coating or anything like that. It's extremely smooth. The Destiny 2 build in the Node 202 was on black powder coated steel. So the powder coat was something that the paint was able to stick to very nicely, especially when I sanded it. So as you saw, when we tried to do our decal, our stencil so that we could get to the final stages, barely pushing it, well, that one I pushed down a lot, but we continued to mess with it. And even if you barely touch anything tacky whatsoever to the paint, when you peeled it up, it brought all the layers up, all the way down to the primer to where you saw the black metal underneath. So that told me I did not do a good job at prepping it. So we started over entirely by stripping everything off back to where the only thing that was done at that point was the holes I made. To do it right, we had to start over. So what you see now is the results of a few things we've done today. One, completely stripped the metal back down, sanded it with 80 grit to start, really scuffed up the metal. Then I used a self etching primer which I should have done the first time. The self-etching primer sat on here. It bit really hard into the metal. It was actually a green primer. Did two layers of that and then saw that I was having a hard time even scratching it. So then I ended up doing a silver metallic base coat. And now we have on top of that, I had done a matte clear, just a single stage matte clear. Now we have this sort of a, this is not a primer, but it is a, a primer plus paint. So there's even more primer on this now. It's just sort of like a, what they call it, a, it's like a matte gray. I think it's something super basic like that. And then we are where we are now, where I've sanded this down, I've alcohol wiped it, it got, I've gotten all of the like fingerprints and stuff off of it. And then we got to the stage now, and this is hard. Like this is really hard on here now. So it's not pulling up. So what we did is we got more stickers and we did a little test. Like, okay, can we put stickers on here 
and have it not pull up the paint? Well, the answer is yes. I already started pulling this logo back up because although this is not our final top coat, we have to still do our chipping. What you'll see is it's not taking any paint. And even where I was touching it with the tweezers, like it barely marks. We also got tired of trying to get vinyl companies or sticker companies to cut the stuff we wanted and trying to tell us, you can't do that. You can't use vinyl as a stencil. We just said, screw you guys. We went and bought our own stencil or our own plotter and our own materials and we're doing it ourselves now. See, that guy that told me that you can't make stencils out of vinyl? Stencil vinyl. Stencil vinyl. Yeah, so, so Phil went over to Michael's Crafts and, um, which is funny because it's all like potpourri in there and yeah. like flowers. It's like, you guys got vinyl cutter. We need to make sticker for our, we need to make our computer. Deal. So what I wanted to show you was we were able to actually do this now and not have a problem. Yay. So now we have to do once again, the, um, the chipping and the hairspray. And I want to point out something too. The hairspray was not the problem. The layers between the hairspray actually stuck together. So now we need to go ahead and do our chipping technique on here again. I'm gonna change the way I did that a little bit. I wasn't happy with the way that turned out, so I'm kind of glad this went the way it did. And then while that's all drying, we're gonna play around with some of our stencil cutting and get that all sort of organized how we want. And then today we can finish this build. It was almost a one day build from Jay. Or one day mod, I should say. I didn't really build the computer. But let's go ahead and get back to where we left off yesterday. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm way happier with the way this turned out versus the last one. A little bit excessive chipping right there, but that's fine. I got a little crazy with the hairspray, I think. Um, I like the way this color turned out. It's a little bit different shade of gray. <laughs> one of the many of 50 shades. So what I gotta do now before I take my airbrush and my get a little setup right here, um, is I've gotta transfer the logos to their various spots. Like somebody that works with graphics all day long, like like for so signs, she's like, oh my God, you're taking forever. They yeah, have been yeah, done already. So yeah. It's like anything else. If you do it for a living, man, you develop all these tricks that save you time because time is money, right? So now if we do a little test here, it's not taking any paint with it because I did it right this time. <laughs> So looking at this, obviously the letters are way too clean, but I do plan on lightly sanding them just to weather it slightly, and let it be a little bit faded. So we know the logo is going to look dope. <laughs> a circle, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a lot of these like scratches that you're seeing, they'll disappear when I clear it again. So this is before any weathering or sanding on the letters, and this is after. So now it looks like it's gone through space and it doesn't, you can't even feel like the airbrush paint sticks so well, you can't even feel those letters. So now I gotta do it with the, the logo. So this is just a half folded in, uh, in half piece of P320 or 320 grit, which is like, it's designed to go on a Velcro block. But I fold it over in half so I have a point to work with because that's a big logo. Obviously we would have had flat surface area like in these big areas where they would have taken impacts and stuff. Clearly this ship or whatever this is, has seen battle, which is what I wanted, obviously with these holes right here, which turned out phenomenal. And I'm not even done with them yet. We need to weather up the, the surface areas, the flat surface areas of this logo. So I'm just kind of putting some scratches in here. Maybe surprised how well this airbrush paint is sticking now that I've con gone in here and fixed this. dirtied this up because we imagine that this would be engine exhaust vents or heat vents or something. I don't know. I just wanted to break up the super smoothness of it. It's probably a little more weathered than an Imperial ship would be, but I imagine this is right after the Battle of Endor or something. I don't know. I mean, it's got to be during that period because that's the logo we're using. But this is the second to the last step. I'm wiping off all the kind of a dust that appears with the airbrushing. And then we're going to clear coat it and put it back together. So with all that said, how about we just go ahead and jump light speed ahead to what it looks like done.
It took twice the effort, but it was worth it. If there's one lesson to be learned from this video, it's that sometimes as much as you don't want to, the only way that you're gonna get it done right is to redo it if you make a big mistake like we did, or I did, with the prepping and uh, the way the sticker took the paint off. But I'm telling you right now, this like is sturdy. This paint is going nowhere. I couldn't even sand off the logo if I wanted. I'm telling you right now, it's like I can't even scratch it with my finger. That's a little more dirty than we think an Imperial ship would really look, but I'm also thinking like, this is kind of how it would look after surviving a battle. I know it turned out way better, I think, than I thought it was going to. The accent color, like the black on the top and the bottom, the weathering, the blaster marks, you guys saw how I made that. That turned out, well, very, very accurate. These blasters are too accurate to be sand people. So this is now gonna be my like land party rig and, and I'm tempted to just bring this home and leave Nebula here because it looks so good. No, I mean, no, Nebula's awesome. I just, my, I haven't even started my home office remodel yet. So there you go, guys. If there's, I mean, it's not hard. And really with the exception of um, the cost of getting the materials and the plotter to cut our own stencils from now on instead of paying someone to do it, there was very little cost involved in this. It's maybe $30 in materials for spray paint and such. And then if you know someone that's got a, a plotter, then it's like the cost of a roll of vinyl for the, um, or even the stencil vinyl like we use is like eight bucks. How much was that roll? Like eight dollars, ten dollars? Yeah, like eight bucks for twelve by forty-eight. Yeah, and it's like buy one get one free or something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah so there you go. Um, so this whole mod, I would say, if we didn't have to buy the plotter, if it went right the first time, this would have cost like sixty bucks to do, because it's just paint. I didn't do anything special with the build. I didn't even touch the insides. That's why it's actually up and running, and I was able to do it in two days, or it would have been one day if I didn't screw it up the first time. And as unhappy as I was, and Phil will tell you, I was pretty pissed last night when the paint came up and we just stopped filming abruptly <laughs> because I was just like, man, I don't wanna do this all again. But I knew, I told Phil, if I'm gonna do this right, I've gotta strip it. And so I took all the paint off, all the way back down to the metal and did it right by properly sanding it, properly degreasing it, and then using the self-etching primer. So there you go, guys. There is my DreamHack build that I'm gonna be playing on when I go to DreamHack Anaheim. So if you guys are going and you wanna see it in person, just kind of come up and take a look at it, maybe take a picture. But if I'm gaming, um, talk to me about it later. <laughs> Cause I'm looking forward to actually playing some games and stuff. <laughs> but there you go guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you learned some things cause that's the whole point of this channel. And you can see that Phil was like, you should do a Star Trek one next. But that's like, we did Destiny 2 and then I did Nebula, which is super clean. So there's Star Wars where wars actually happen. And then there's Star Trek where it's just galactic, yes, it's, it's galactic negotiation sim or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it really just, let's go talk about it. You know, that would have to be a super clean, you know, cause remember it is a Marriott. So it is a flying Marriott ship. It's a cruise ship, that's what it is. All right, I'm just gonna go because I'm pissing people off, I'm sure, so. I like both, okay guys? TNG all the way. You like boats or you like both? I like boats and both. I like both boats. <laughs> so this is my 300 scale, or 350 scale Bismarck that I did. And then this was my Christmas present for my wife. This is a, not Lego, but it's Kobe. And it's another Bismarck. It's just funny, I'm not like obsessed with the Bismarck or anything. I think it has a really interesting history. I kind of wanted to do the Yamato, but okay, bye. I'm gonna play my boots. <laughs>